Hi, Scott Nelson, Senior Wealth Manager with Boulay Financial Advisors. Like you, I've noticed how the past few months have been tough on the pocketbook. Since we have emerged from the pandemic shutdown, gas prices are up 50%, used car prices are up 25 Food prices as well. General Mills announced they're recently going to raise price of cereal and other products by 20% due to higher ingredient costs. A bit of inflation is typical during an economic recovery, but the economic recovery this time has been anything but typical. And the inflation we're seeing isn't either. So I'm here to help make sense of what's going on and let you know how Boulay's investment team sees the situation. The government tracks inflation with the Consumer Price Index, or CPI for short. Now the CPI measures the annual change in the price of a basket of typical goods such as food, energy, and also the cost of housing. As you can see on the chart, inflation was just 1.4% at the beginning of 2021. And that's even lower than the 2% annual average that we've experienced over the past decade. But last spring, the CPI jumped to over 4%. And then over the summer, it was up over 5%. Before it climbed to above 6% this fall. This is the highest rate Americans have seen since the mid-1980s. So what is causing this surge? Well, the sudden jumps in inflation always tend to be a situation of too many dollars chasing too few goods. The too many dollars part comes from built-up savings from over a year of sheltering at home, plus all the dollars injected into the economy from the government's stimulus program, as well as the Federal Reserve's program of buying bonds on the open market. By spring 2021, these sources led American households to be holding an estimated $2 trillion of short-term savings that they were mostly intending to spend if given the opportunity. Now, the too few goods part comes down to the fact that supply just hasn't kept up with demand. That supply issue is due to the fact that the product supply chain has grown into a global multi-country web of raw materials and parts producers in one country supplying finished good makers in another who then supply stores, warehouses, and customers around the globe. COVID has potentially caused delays at every step of this process due to just the different ways people and countries are dealing with the pandemic. China, for example, has an aggressive approach that often involves shutting down entire cities when a single COVID case is detected. Now, producers are figuring out ways to get products built, but they still have the problem of capacity constraints at ports, cargo ships, and trains that together with the shortages of containers, dock workers, and truck drivers is proven to be a bottleneck of historic proportions. Another bottleneck has also developed in the housing market. COVID has pushed up demand for single-family homes at the same time it's pushed down the number of people who want to put their home on the market. This caused the average price of a home sold in 2021 to rise approximately 19%. Given that the housing is by far the biggest chunk of the CPI index, the housing market's issues are a big influence on the level of inflation being reported. So it's a complex set of problems, some of which are going to get resolved sooner than others. With respect to supply issues, energy prices will probably start easing as natural gas and oil production is back to pre-pandemic levels. Experts in the shipping business say that it'll probably take till mid-2022 for the logjam at ports to untangle. And experts in the housing industry expect home sale price inflation to cool a bit in 2022, but they also contend it will be several years before the housing supply catches up with demand. As for the too many dollars side of this inflation equation, the Federal Reserve has announced its willingness to take aggressive steps to cool off inflation, including quickly curtailing its program of adding liquidity to the economy, and then being open to also possibly raising rates as many as three times in 2022. As little as six months ago, there was some question whether they would raise rates at all before 2023. 
At Boule Financial Advisors, we don't view the current bout of inflation as leading to anything comparable to the stagflation of the 1970s. We do question, though, whether inflation will return to the rather low 2% level that we have experienced over the past decade. Even before the run-up in inflation, the investment team at Boule saw value in adding an agriculture commodities fund to our list of preferred investments. That proved well-timed, as commodities are a type of investment that tends to move up in tandem with inflation. The investment team is also sticking to buying mostly shorter-term bonds, given the Federal Reserve's willingness to raise rates in 2022. And that's because shorter-term bonds respond better to interest rate hikes than bonds with longer maturities. And we're also still optimistic about stocks as well. We expect the recovery to get back on track after the latest COVID surge recedes, and hopefully Households will then get the opportunity to extend how they are spending their built-up savings to activities they haven't done in a couple years. This should be a boost to hard-hit sectors like entertainment, travel, and leisure. So this is our take on inflation situation as 2021 draws to a close. If you have any questions about your portfolio allocation and uh, the impact of inflation on it, please reach out to your Boule Financial Advisor. Thank you. Be safe and best wishes for a prosperous 2022.